Number 10. Cursed trumpets. King Tut's trumpets are a pair that were found in the burial chamber of the 18th dynasty pharaoh upon discovery. One silver and one bronze. The oldest operational trumpets in the world and the only known surviving examples from ancient Egypt. Both are engraved with images of the gods and both were silent for more than 3,000 years before the trumpets were played for 150 million people live on a BBC broadcast in 1939. And then World War II happened. Yeah, because apparently the curator of the Tut collection at the Egypt Museum says whenever they're played, a war occurs. Yeah. The bronze trumpet was stolen from the museum in Cairo during the looting riots of 2011, and then hilariously enough, returned two weeks later. Yeah, apparently Buddy didn't like the ancient gods just roaming his condo. Uh, you think? Number nine. Annabelle, the most infamous and dangerous possessed doll in the world. Yeah, pretty well all you need to know about that. Found at the home of the Warren's Occult Museum in Connecticut, we know a little bit about this doll with all the films about her. She rests inside a glass case marked warning, positively do not touch. Aggressive, but necessary. Gifted to a nursing student from a thrift store in the 70s, incidents involving levitating onto the table and running around at night, she took the doll to a medium who said it was possessed by a little girl who had passed. Ed and Lorraine were called shortly after and they offered to take it to their home. On the way home, Ed said that the doll was making the car do funny things. Swerving, no power steering, brake checks, haunted, haunted, yeah. The museum unfortunately shut down in 2019, but the cursed objects seem to be staying put, which the owners even refuse to make eye contact with. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I would definitely Ronaldo that thing across the room if it was running around my apartment 2 a.m. Just field goal it right out the window. Number eight, Travis Walton. The horrifying abduction of Arizona forester Travis Walton. This is my favorite alien abduction case, yet the scariest, hands down. Fire in the Sky, filmed in 1993, does a pretty bang up job at what happened that night. In 1975, Walton and a logging crew were working in the National Forest. Him and six of his coworkers encountered a saucer-shaped craft feet away from their truck, making a high-pitched tone. The curious Walton was then blasted by a light beam and apparently abducted into their ship. The men were terrified and drove off immediately. Walton claims that he then woke up in a hospital room on board, observed by three short bald creatures, before fighting tirelessly and losing consciousness. He remembers nothing else until he found himself awake, walking along a highway five days later, naked, just wandering the highway in a daze. He's had tons of interviews, Guy was definitely taken. He's also so peaceful about it too. He's just convinced that they tried to heal him from the accidental blast. I check your organs in your pineal gland. Just make sure they're all there and intact, you know? Holy moly. Number seven, Proctor's Ledge. Over 1,000 documents from Salem's witch trials, yet none of the accounts actually specify where the hangings took place. For more than 300 years, it was believed that the 19 people who were accused, tried, and executed in the Salem witch trials of 1692 were hanged at the summit of Gallows Hill. Maps of 1700 Salem show Gallows Hill marked out, but no actual marker of the execution site. Hmm, that's odd. A team of researchers began to reconsider the evidence in 2010 and eventually concluded it was the right spot. Yeah, oopsies. Actually, the real execution spot was called Proctor's Ledge. Also, eerie name for where they hang people, isn't it? It was confirmed in 2016 by scientists after ground penetrating data and writings from 1692 that it wasn't the actual location of the brutality. I know what you're thinking. It's named after John Proctor. No, no it's not. However, really odd timing as he was one of the witches accused of witchcraft. Locals say that the ghost named the Lady in White visits Proctor's Ledge often, which now makes sense with the whole we found the right spot stuff. Visitors claim to have caught sightings of her and even catch her disembodied voice. Yeah. Number six, props. Elmer McCurdy was an American outlaw, running with a small crew, banking and train robbing the Wild West until he was killed in a shootout with sheriffs after robbing a Katy train in Oklahoma in 1911. Famously known as the bandit who wouldn't give up, his mummified body was first put on display at an Oklahoma funeral home before being an amusement, traveling carnival show to carnival show during the 1920s right through the 1960s. After changing ownership several times, McCurdy's remains eventually wound up at the Pike Amusement Zone in Long Beach, California. His corpse was then used as a prop, but then discovered by a film crew on a set of The Six Million Dollar Man. They were positively identified in 1976, and the following year, 1977, 
Elmer McCurdy's body was finally laid to rest at the Summit View Cemetery in Oklahoma. McCurdy's fingers were apparently so damaged that detectives couldn't even pull a fingerprint. The coroners had to x-ray his teeth and measure his bones to ID him. His pockets included a bullet, a Sunny Amusement Museum of Crime ticket, a newspaper article, and a 1924 penny. Yeah, that's terrible. Just weekend at burning him for like 60 years set to set? Not really knowing it's a real body? People will do anything for money, won't they? Number five, Operation High Jump. Operation High Jump, officially named the United States Navy Antarctic Developments Program, launched in 1946 to 1947. An operation to establish an Antarctic research base organized by Admiral Richard E. Byrd. High Jump included 4,700 men, 13 ships, and 33 aircrafts. The war's end signaled the onset of the atomic age and a desire to secure supplies of uranium. With its almost unlimited mineral deposits, the largely unexplored territory of Antarctica was just the prize. It commenced 1946 and ended in late 1947, or did it? Also known as Task Force 68, Bird and his team established the Little America 4 base near three previous bases in the ice. The frozen aircrafts would photograph as much of the Antarctic's land surface as possible during this three-month operation. Seems like the public thinks that High Jump could have been more fishy than we think. Seems like skeptics are leaning towards more of a secret military expedition to the center of the Earth type stuff. Yep. Apparently there's a mouth to the center of the planet in the Antarctic and there was a secret race to find it. High Jump is still today at the mercy of the internet on whether or not it was a legit project or a secretly funded scientific expedition. Google it up. It's pretty wild and very real. Number four, Ouija boards. Popularized by teens in the 1970s, the Ouija board has earned its reputation over the years. Created almost 100 years before its heightened popularity, the year is 1891. And as the first ads started to appear in papers claiming, quote, Ouija, the wonderful talking board, the title from a Pittsburgh toy and novelty shop, the first paper described it as a magical game that answered questions about the past, present, and future with marvelous accuracy. A flat board with the letters of the alphabet configured in two semicircles. Above, the numbers 0 through 9. The words yes and no in the upper corners, goodbye at the bottom. No batteries included, nor needed. Now, the origins are pretty messy, and it's hard to kind of pinpoint who or what inspired these early attempts at this game. It kind of just appeared on shelves. No, literally. The Kennard Novelty Company exclusively made and marketed these talking boards, and apparently the lore goes that one of the designer's sisters was a medium and asked the board what it would like to be called. It responded, Ouija, followed by, good luck. Well, that's absolutely terrifying. At least good sportsmanship though, right? Yeah, I've never played with one of these, nor will I ever. That's a no brainer Number three, a haunting in Connecticut. Based on all real case end point, a 2009 gem, the accounts of the horrific case of the Snedekers who moved into a ghost infested house in Connecticut, unknowingly moving into one of the most sinister haunted funeral homes on earth. At first, mom notices items missing, but that's just the start. Then the children started to see strange people in their home, and then their son started to act a little strange. Violent outbursts, physical attacks on his own family, Maybe he was becoming the next victim to the house's grim history. After months of scary stuff going on, the Warrens were finally called in and turned out the morticians that had lived there previously had practiced some abysmally sinister acts on some lifeless bodies, deepening the home into the hell it was now sold as. An exorcism or two later, and the house finally became a home again. The case can be reimagined in 2009's Haunting in Connecticut, where the story follows the story drawn out by the Snedekers all those sinister years ago. Yo, Taylor gets possessed, I'm swinging immediately. You know what I mean? Like so many holy hands right away, just. Number two, Statue of Lem. The Women of Lem statue was discovered in Lem, Cyprus in 1878 and dates back to about 3500 BCE. The statue earned the nickname the Goddess of Death after four different families experienced tragedy while possessing the carved stones. The first owner, along with his entire family, died within six years of owning the statue, all of mysterious and rapid illnesses. The other two owners also died, of course, along with their entire families, just a few short years after obtaining the statue. The fourth owner died alongside his wife and two daughters of mysterious causes while in possession of the rock. Now, a gift to the Royal Scottish Museum in Edinburgh, it's encased in glass, safe, and unable to bear any other family bad omens. And number one, the mummy. My number one spot, of course, this is the most 
terrifying find of all. In 1991, a 5,000-year-old frozen preserved human mummy was discovered in the frozen Otzel Apps of Italy. Otzi, of course, is the name the researchers chose to name this mummy for obvious location reasons. Otzi, though, is believed to have been murdered before being frozen in time due to the discovery of an arrowhead embedded in his left shoulder, various wounds on his body, and also the blood-soaked tunic he's wearing with multiple people's DNA on it. Maybe in combat, maybe from megafauna, who knows? Scientists believe that he's the oldest known naturally preserved mummy on Earth. This is where it's gonna get spooky. Once unearthed, a curse surfaced too, and grew stronger as people linked to him began to die one after another in violent freak accidents. So far, seven deaths have been tied or related to Otzi's dethawing, including forensic pathologist who was killed in a car accident en route to give a speech about Otzi, a mountaineer in an avalanche, a hiker who discovered the Iceman falling down a treacherous path, the molecular archaeologist was found dead in his home, the head of the forensic team had a heart attack, another discoverer died of a sudden brain tumor, and another of multiple sclerosis. Yo, say what you will about curses, when people start dropping all involved with the find, I'd say it's probably the 5,000 year old mummy you just found. You think? Kicking off our list at number 10. Floating hand. Okay, this one is so scary. Kill those lights. Let's dive into it, right? This photo is from over a hundred years ago. Now this time, the photographer may or may not have caught a floating spirit hand in their photo. Yeah, I'll show you the photo. Let me know if you see it at first, right? Take a glance. What? What's wrong with this photo? Anything sticking out? Any floating hands just, uh, appearing in the photo. This photo is a group of women who worked in a linen factory. The lady on the far right appears to have an extra hand resting on her shoulder. Yeah, her right, our left. This may be a hidden person, maybe somebody with long arms was out of frame. I'm a lanky guy myself. I can put my arms around like nine of my friends in a photo, I get it. But it's the positioning of the hand that gives me the chills, right? It looks curled almost, which gives it a demonic, insidious, the last key vibes. You know what I'm saying? Number nine. Colossal squid. Not to be confused with the giant squid, those are similar, but dare I say, smaller. Mm -hmm. As its name hint towards, the colossal squid is it's huge. It's one of the biggest things I've ever seen in my entire life. They live in the darkest, coldest depths surrounding the waters of Antarctica. These squid are on average 46 feet in length, with the females being the largest of the species. They have large tentacles with suckers equipped with razor hooks, so whatever it grabs, it's certainly not letting go anytime soon. Its diet consists of large fish, and when I say large, I'm referring to a seven foot long Pentagonian toothfish. You know, not like a little goldfish. No, these are colossal. They need a colossal meal. They try and fight whales sometimes. You know what I mean? They have no regard for the size of others, and they're more often than not marked up, suggesting that they've been in a few deep sea tussles, right? Octopus wants to fight. It's my favorite IPA. That's the inspiration right there. On top of being magnificent, they're quite mysterious. Only two specimens have ever been collected, with the second being as recent as 2014. Do you believe this is the closest living thing to the Kraken? I don't know, I'm horrified of deep sea creatures, so this list is haunting in my way, okay? Number eight, Island of the Dolls, Mexico. I'm also not a fan of dolls on islands, so pretty haunting. This island is famous, of course, for having dolls or doll parts just spread about all over. Why, you ask? Well, let's talk about it. The islands surrounding this one are inhabited, but this one is said to be filled with demonic spirits, so no one's hanging out, no one's camping, I guess. Specifically, the spirit of a young girl who drowned there way back. Like Camp Crystal Lake, only creepier, dare I say. These dolls are hanging or nailed to the trees. Now the dolls have to come from somewhere, right? And they came from a local resident by the name of Julian Santa Barrera. He put all these doll parts up in order to try and ward away any demonic spirits, right? He's fighting back by nailing doll parts to a tree. I guess that's, he's a hero. To this day, nobody dares to approach the island. They would much rather snap a photo from far away on their boat, which I totally agree with. That's probably a much better idea. If it didn't look haunted before, it definitely does now with the doll parts. I don't know, great call, Julian. Could have used smudge sticks though, I don't know. Doll parts, that's a bit hard. Number seven. Werewolves of London. Real werewolves. In the 80s, Lorraine and Ed Warren traveled in search of a real life wolf man. Apparently they were watching a TV show following the life of a local werewolf, Bill Ramsey, in London, England, and Lorraine felt a strange connection to him. After a quick trip to London for more answers, she found Bill's whereabouts. Unlike usual werewolf folklore, he didn't transform every full moon, and he didn't get bit. Bill Ramsey was apparently possessed by an evil wolf spirit. That's right. 
It was so bad that he needed a full-blown exorcism. The Warrens brought Bill back to Connecticut to meet Bishop Robert McKenna, and the exorcism was a success. Thanks to everyone involved that day, Bill lives a pretty normal life now, very unpossessed. Yeah, I'd hope so. This is terrifying. Imagine that's your neighbor. Yeah, sometimes I change into a werewolf once in a blue moon. I'm Bill, nice to meet you, welcome to the neighborhood. This is a fruitcake. Number six, Osiris. Yet again, something stolen that's very, very old. Why do people steal the oldest, most cursed stuff? The infamous statue of Osiris. In 1971, during an excavation in Saqqara, Egyptologist Walter Brian Emery found a small statue of the Egyptian god of death, Osiris. Emery took the statue of Osiris and once at his house, Emery went to the bathroom to shower. After a few moments, apparently his assistant heard Emery screaming in fear. He found him clutching the sink, scared to death and paralyzed. Emery was diagnosed with paralysis of the right side of his body and was unable to speak. He died the following day. Uh, yeah, talk about a curse of the pharaohs. Like, buddy, you can't just steal stuff and then just throw it up overseas in a museum. Especially the stuff that clearly says in hieroglyphics, do not remove, this is cursed. It's pretty clear right there. Like, never steal anything ancient, you know? That's just a scary movie like waiting to happen. Number five, the Perrin family. In 1952, Ed and Lorraine founded the New England Society for Psychic Research. They quickly gained notoriety after this next case. The Parents. In 1971, the Parent family, Carolyn, Roger, and their five daughters moved into a 14-room farmhouse in Rhode Island. At first, items started disappearing, then the ghostly sightings started. It was discovered that the home had some previous sinister owners. Self-emulation, freak accidents, and of course, murder in the attic. Whoever the spirit was, she perceived herself to be the mistress of the house, and she resented the competition my mother posed. The parents asked the Warrens to come in more than 10 separate times to help against this sinister, ghastly entity. During one seance, Carolyn was possessed, even rising from the ground while sitting in a chair. Andrea, the oldest daughter, said, My mother began to speak a language not of this world in a voice not of her own. Then her chair levitated and she was thrown across the room. Yeah, just zipping around the house, floating around on a chair like the Jetsons? Yeah, no thank you, that's like haunted, haunted. Just bulldoze that thing, would you? Number four, the ring. One ring to rule them all. The vine ring, AKA the ring of Silvianus, is a gold ring from the fourth century AD. The ring was discovered on a farm in 1785 in England. First, the property of a British Roman named Silvianus. Apparently, it was stolen by a person named Senecianus, upon which Silvianus hexed the ring with a curse. In 1929, during excavations of the site, archeologists discovered the now curse that goes with said ring, consulting shortly after with one J.R.R. Tolkien. Mm. The band of the ring has 10 edges. Among it is the goddess Venus engraved, along with the words, live in God. The lore goes, Silvianus' ring was stolen by someone named Senecianus. Silvianus created and hexed a tablet, which he wrote, for the god Nodens. Silvianus has lost a ring that has donated one half of its worth to Nodens. Among those named Senecianus, permit no good health until it's returned to the temple of Nodens. Yeah, that sounds like a spell to me, dude. And Noden is like Poseidon, so you don't want any of that smoke. Number three, underneath Thwaites Glacier. We've seen some fascinating stuff here on Bumblebee, specifically underwater creatures and haunting stuff from our past. We love exploring the depths, and this next one, I couldn't believe it's actually terrifying to look at. This is footage from the bottom of an Antarctic glacier. This glacier is the size of Florida. If it collapses, our sea levels could rise 10 feet, so it's a pretty big deal. So scientists were like, yeah, let's drill a hole through the middle of it and see what happens. Yeah, in 2019, researchers drilled 2,300 feet right through the middle of the Thwaites Glacier, and they dropped a robot with the camera down, and they saw this. This is the first time we've seen the grounding zone of Thwaites Glacier. Lead scientist Brittany Schmidt says this project is a dream come true, and for me, it's a nightmare that I now have to look at. I don't wanna watch this video ever again, but you should, it's pretty cool. Number two. Tomb KV-55, classic, going back to Egypt for our Bumblebee fans. Located in the Valley of Kings in Egypt, Tomb 55, otherwise KV-55, was discovered by Edward Arton back in 1907. And the reason we call this tomb by a number rather than a name is because, well, we don't know who or what exactly was inside. 
Even the walls inside of it, they aren't like other tombs covered in ancient hieroglyphs or, you know, art or anything nice. No, this time there's nothing here. The only hint that remains is one hieroglyph. And it's scary. It translates to, the evil one shall not live again. Even these massive stones were built in order to prevent anything from getting out of the tomb. Yeah, out of the tomb. Usually with ancient tombs in history, it's the opposite. Things are, you know, prevented to get grave robbers to come in. This time they're like, no, 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 we don't want anything getting out. That's kind of haunting. Many believe that it's Akhenaten because he got on the wrong foot with, uh, you know, the high priests over 17 years of ruling. He was convincing everybody that their art and religion was wrong. And the only god in existence was his sun god. So his own son, King Tut, succeeded him and luckily restored the previous religion back to normal. But yeah, maybe that's why this tomb is empty. Maybe they're like, you know what? We don't want history to remember you. You tried to out religion, so we're good. Number one, house guest. I saved the best for last, and by that I mean this is the scariest thing I've ever seen. This video, yep, little surprise for you, there we go. This comes from a middle-aged man in Oxford, North Carolina. It was his day off of work and he was looking forward to just kicking back, relaxing, and instead he had to deal with this. Instead, the lights in his home started to flicker and immediately after, the smoke detector started to go off. The lights were flickering all over the house, not just one room. The fridge light, the bathroom light, you name it. The water even started to run by itself. So something started to go wrong, apparently. And he filmed the happenings, but when he looked back in the footage, you know, after fleeing his home on his only day off, he caught this peeking from the other room when looking back. Pretty terrifying, right? Yeah. Whether it's thalassophobia or ghosts, we're hoping something, one of these photographs, gave you a little scare here today on Bumblebee Haunting. Number seven, nursing home spirit. Also, we're gonna throw in some ghosts in this list, so again, hope those lights are dimmed. This photo was taken from a nursing home resident the same night another resident had passed away and they had no idea. This was back in 2015. That night, they heard a door open and close out in the hallway, but no visitors were allowed there at the time, so they noted it. It was, you know, a little odd. So there's a great amount of people who thinks that this image here is one of two things. One, the spirit of the resident that sadly passed away, or two, it could be the Grim Reaper. Yeah, how scary is that? Both terrible options. A few comments were saying how it's comforting to know that in the end, you aren't alone and, you know, an entity or something will walk you to the other side. I disagree. I think it's uh, terrifying. I'd rather die alone than have this dude break into my home and then walk me to the afterlife. I don't want any Grim Reaper. Thank you. Check out this photo. What do you think? Is this real or is this fake? Comment down below. Number six, magnificent alien. While the rest of the world was in panic mode, a new sea sponge was discovered in 2020. How fun is that? And by fun, I mean definitely an alien. This is terrifying. It was named Advina Magnifica, which translates to magnificent alien. Alien, yep, magnificent alien, they're gonna call it. This sponge literally gets its name because it looks like E.T. And to be fair, it does look like E.T., it's kinda cute. An ROV found this sample over 6,000 feet deep in the Pacific Ocean. This was never meant to be found, and we did it. They found it in what they call a forest of weird. Just an alien sponge sticking their E.T. heads out, hoping for some food to pass by. That's literally their entire life. They just sit there and wait in the darkness until some sort of dust just sticks on them, and they go, and they eat it, somehow. Christiana Castella Branco, the researcher who found this deep sea squishy, explains the discovery in an NOAA interview saying, as all these organisms are intricately connected by documenting and describing marine biodiversity, we are building a better understanding of life and the impact of humans on Earth, and in this case, in the ocean, end quote. For a guy like me who doesn't like the ocean or any of the creatures in it, that's terrifying. See ya. Number five. The Shining Hotel Spirit. The Stanley Hotel in Colorado is now, of course, quite famous for its use in the Stanley Kubrick 1980 classic, The Shining. The lodge, being over 100 years old, has a pretty decent chance of being haunted in real life. So the spirit tours that happen there pack a punch for fans of the production and also fans for the paranormal. Jay Mosling was on one of these tours, so like any ghost expert would do, they snapped a few photos of random corners of the room. Gotta catch those ghosts with the flash, it's the only way. After the trip, he was going through said photos and he found this gem. It appears to be a spirit, a demon, a ghost, an apparition, something. Something that's see-through and floating, so scary. It also has long black hair, it appears, so yeah, I don't know what's going on there. The room was of course empty at the time the photo was taken, and I do believe that. There's no way you could just snap random photos of people and be like, oh, I was looking for ghosts, sorry. <laughs> no, that's illegal, you can't do that. Number four. 
deep sea pigs. All right, we'll bring it back up to some scary sea stuff. These guys are a genus of sea cucumber, but they have these little tube-like legs, which is why they look super weird and scary. Not that regular sea cucumbers look exceptionally normal, these ones look even weirder than that of regular ones, so gotta include them. They like to live on the seafloor, where they move through the sediment searching for their next meal. They eat, check this out, they eat by extracting tiny little particles of organic matter that's just fallen from the surface of the ocean. Yeah, they just wait around for scraps to, again, just land on them. How sad is that? It's kind of funny, but it's mostly sad. Sea pigs measure out to be four to six inches long. So yeah, I guess they're cute, sure, I guess. They're small, so therefore cute. I'll admit it, they're okay to look at. And they live at a depth of somewhere between 1,200 to 5,000 meters deep, so I don't have to worry about any of these sea pigs grabbing my own little piggies, right? They're quite deep, so therefore out of sight, out of mind. They are small, but they're mighty. Their skin carries a natural poison, which can make them a horrible midnight snack for anyone involved. Also, when brought up closer to the surface, they literally disintegrate. So that's a scary fact to know about an animal. Number three, Worstead Church Visitor. Okay, time to get a little paranormal. We love those. Hit the lights. Back in 1975, Peter and Diane Berthelot were visiting the Worstead Church in the UK. It was beautiful, right? So like any visitor does, Peter took a photo with his nice Kodak camera, right? He wants to see the truth with his Kodak. Peter took a photo of his lovely wife sitting in this spectacle of a church, but later on, once the photo was developed, Somebody else was all of a sudden in the photo now. Or something, we don't really know. Right on the bench behind Diane, there appears to be a person in all white. How calming is that? Maybe it's a wedding, maybe it's their big day. We love it. When the couple went back to the church to ask about who it was, a local suggested they may have gotten photo proof of the white lady, the spirit of a healer who haunts the church. I mean, as far as surprise ghosts go, that's pretty tame. That's a pretty tame encounter. That's how it should be. Could have been a lot worse. They're like, oh, that's the demon. That's Daryl the demon, yeah. You don't want any part of that. Number two, Black Knight Satellite. Not to be confused with Martin Lawrence Black Knight, that's, you know, although that's pretty historical and memorable in itself, the Black Knight Satellite is something that has been orbiting our planet for God knows how long. We're guessing thousands of years. Everything else on this list is quite recent, but this myth is ancient. This photo here you've probably seen at one point or another. It was taken back in 1998 during an American mission to the International Space Station. Apparently this guy has been hovering over our Earth just watching us. It's some sort of alien satellite. That's a fun theory, no doubt about it. But during a spacewalk in 1998, one of the thermal covers came loose and drifted away from the station. Could this be that cover that just floated off and wrapped itself around a rock or something? Or it could be an ancient night satellite. One of the two. And finally, number one, the doorbell liquor. Nice, we gotta end with the weirdest thing I've ever seen. This one's short and sweet. Not much explaining to do here, obviously. Does what it says in the can. Back in 2019, a man was caught on surveillance, a doorbell camera, approaching a home in a neighborhood in Salinas, California. He doesn't say much, he just shows up. Doesn't drop off any package, nothing like that. He just shows up and uh, starts licking the doorbell. Not the camera, but the actual doorbell, like the button. He must have rang the bell hundreds of times because he did this for three hours straight. His jaw muscles must be insane. The homeowner said in a following interview after seeing said footage, uh, I quote, oh boy, that is just weird. Yeah, that's what they said to that footage for three hours of a man licking their doorbell. They're like, oh boy, that's weird. If that was me, I'd move. I'd be halfway packing. I'd be like, oh boy, that's weird. Grab a box, let's go. We're moving. Number 10, demonic boy photo. All right, scary as hell right off the hop. It doesn't matter where or when, but odds are you've seen this photo at some point in your life. It's pretty haunting, it's kind of hard to forget. Check it out. You know when you see a photo, sometimes you just get bad vibes, like it registers in your brain as something real and scary. You want to find something about this photo that looks fake, but it's hard. This photo here was taken inside the Amityville house back in 1976, the real house. It appears to be a young boy with glowing white eyes. Kind of, kind of hard to forget. It was taken with automatic cameras equipped with infrared, so nobody actually took this themselves, it was just set up. It makes it even creepier that the boy looks like he's peeking around the corner. Makes my heart race just looking at that photo right there. A photographer named Gene Campbell operated this and got this photo. See, Gene was working with paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren at this time, the famous duo now rocking the big screen Conjuring Universe. They were on this case in real life. This photo was then revealed three years later on the Merv Griffin Show. Imagine tuning in watching TV on the Merv Griffin Show and then all of a sudden you see the ghost of John DeFeo. That's nice. Yeah, many believe this is the ghost of one John DeFeo, one of the boys who lived 
there prior to that 1974 horrible event. We're still trying to cover this. What do you guys think? Elaborate hoax or perhaps this photo is one solid piece of evidence that the Amityville house was and still is indeed haunted. Number nine, Svalbard Vault. Over the pandemic, I spent a lot of time playing video games. Chris and I actually just talked about video games for like eight minutes straight before we click record, so that's pretty funny. Some of my favorite games always have a similar theme. They always have this post apocalyptic feel. It's always just barren wasteland with like one dog as a survivor and you have to like go and eat scraps. Yeah, Fallout, it's a great game. There's shelters with survivors or even vaults. It's stressful, but it's engaging, right? Searching around. Now in real life, we do have a global seed vault and it's deep in the Arctic Circle on the island Spitsbergen. Now in this massive bunker that has since been deemed the Doomsday Vault, great name, really rolls off the tongue there. This is where humans will store food crops. It contains 100 million seeds. So if the earth all of a sudden, you know, gets wiped out or even if all the ice melts and it floods and everything goes to quickly, this vault will still be good to go. All that water that just, you know, flooded the rest of humanity will then regrow the earth with all of these seeds, ideally. It sounds like a fun, cute way to get humans to think about the future. You're like, hey, throw some seeds in, make a wish. But I'm concerned. Is there something we don't know? How soon is this gonna happen? Why is everybody involved in this little seed heist? Number eight, Pluto's Gate. Number eight, Pluto's Gate. It rhymes, what's up? Also known as the Gate to Hell. <sighs> Okay, that's horrifying. These runes discovered in Turkey back in 1965 are beautiful, but they're also cursed. Historians believe that the site is the ancient city of Hierapolis. And if you're thinking about visiting these eerie ruins, well, you better leave the family pet at home. Yet any and all animal that enters these ruins, they also meet instant death. Sparrows were tossed in and then they immediately stopped breathing and they dropped. This was horrifying locals, so they had to resort to science. Scientists have figured out the solution and it's still pretty haunting. They measured the CO2 concentration and turns out while the sun is up, it burns away the gas, but at night, when the temperature drops significantly, the CO2 becomes heavier than that of air. Then it creates this deadly gas cloud on the floor, and then when the sun rises back up again, the concentration of CO2 hits 35%, so it's deadly enough for animals and sometimes even humans. Yeah, just stay away from anything called the gates of hell. How about that? It's pretty sound advice just to play it safe. Number seven, Norway lights. Natural light phenomena is common in our big, beautiful planet. The northern lights, the green flash, solar eclipses, you name it. I bet those were all pretty alarming back in ancient times. Now, some of these natural events look otherworldly. They look cosmic almost. Most of the time, there's an explanation waiting, but for the mysterious glowing orbs floating over Norway, the Hausdellen lights, as locals call them, we still need some answers. Scientists have been trying to gather research and in 2014, after many impressive light shows, their best guess is a natural battery that charges underground and then emits this light show above. Maybe this has something to do with the uh, reoccurring lights over Phoenix. Could be the same phenomena happening, who knows. Number six, the cool time traveler. Do you believe in time travel? If your answer is no, maybe this next one, maybe it'll change your mind or keep you open to the concept. It's a common theme in movies, Back to the Future, Loopers, Avengers. Time travel plots are fun, but they're absolute nonsense. Or are they? When we see a case like the Cape Scott story, we can't help but be intrigued a little bit. Time travel or not, this is an interesting photo. It comes from Ray Peterson's book, The Great Cape Scott Story. That book was from 1974, but the actual photo used in the book was taken over 100 years ago. And in the photo, it shows this modern looking guy rocking shorts, maybe jorts, who knows? He has messy morning surfer hair, dippity do, three hold, you know, that kind of stuff. He doesn't look like he's from that time period at all. This also has happened more than once, like the time traveling hipster. I don't know, I'm pretty sure it's my cousin. That looks like a guy I know. Definitely not a guy from the 1900s, that's for sure. Number five, skunk ape. This one is exactly what it sounds like. The skunk ape was seen back in 2000, so hopefully, if it's a real thing, it's long gone. Hopefully it's dead by now, it's pretty gross. Two photos were taken of the supposed skunk ape, and this thing looks like Bigfoot's cooler, older cousin, you know? That cousin who has a lava lamp, does kickflips in the garage in October, that kind of cousin, that's the skunk ape, really. An anonymous source sent the Sarasota County Sheriff's Department these photos. They mailed them in, which for starters, that's pretty jarring to receive. Just a creature, just a Bigfoot, put it in the mail. But she claims these photos were taken in her actual backyard and that this creature was not a black bear. It wasn't anything we've seen before. I personally don't think that's a black bear. If anything, it's just a really large, odd looking dog. Those teeth alone are a red flag either way. I want nothing to do with that. Number four, Solway Spaceman caught on photo. Look, we've all been photobombed before. It's a blessing in disguise. You look back at prom photos, some dude sneezing in the background while you're, you know, 
having the moment of your life. It's the best, we love it. But when Jim Templeton took a photo of his daughter in an otherwise empty marsh, long before Photoshop existed, it appears an astronaut just crashed the family moment. He just had to pop up in the photo in the background. Now, Jim assures us that nobody was around, which I believe, otherwise, what a weird photo to take in an empty field. I'd be like, hi, get away from my daughter. Just, yeah, 17 meters to the left, thanks. Also, the fact that this man looks like he's from space. Yeah, that makes it more believable, no? What are we looking at right now? Who is this? It's so, so creepy. Kodak even got involved in this story, right? Like Kodak, the company Kodak. They confirmed this photo was not tampered with and they know everything. They made Avatar, so they know what's up. Let's run everything by Kodak from now on, deal? Number three, the specter of Newbie Church. This one comes from 1963, so it's a little more recent, but even so, this is one of the most convincing on this list, in my humble opinion. Reverend KF Lord took this photo in the Newbie Church in England. England's a hot spot for ghosts, eh? Damn. And Lord ensures us that this photo is 100% real. I mean, to be fair, it looks like the spirit is facing the camera, so I don't know. It's a great frame, but I'm still believing. The whole Plague Doctor vibe going on here, that's what makes me feel gross here. Anything with Plague Doctors is always giving me the creeps, so I can't even look at this photo. The figure seems to be standing on the first step to the altar, yet somehow it is still taller than the actual altar itself. We think this being, this ghost, is about nine feet tall, so so whoever faked this, if that is the case, they must have been on stilts or something. Also, stilts and a sheet over your face on a staircase? I don't know, that's, I don't think anyone faked this. That's for sure a very tall demon. Drink your milk, then you'll be tall and strong in the afterlife, just like that demon right there. Number two, the Paris Catacombs. As above, so below, is an underrated horror film. It's very good. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Makes you all sweaty and not nice. In the movie, a team of explorers accidentally go too deep when exploring the Paris catacombs, and in turn, they have to face their own hellish nightmare. I'm not gonna give anything away. Well, this is not too far-fetched, it seems. In what feels like a never-ending maze, the tunnels underneath Paris stretch for hundreds of miles. See, originally, the tunnels were built for Paris stone mines, but near the end of the 18th century, it turned into something a little more haunting. Cemeteries at this point in history were starting starting to fill up. And I mean that in a literal sense, like bodies. It was gross, we didn't know what to do, right? Humans didn't figure out the cleanliness thing for a while, so bodies would be laying on the side of the road. So the solution here was to use these catacombs, right? These tunnels have been there for centuries, so you might as well put them to good use. And by good use, I mean arguably the scariest basement in the world. Just walls of skulls. What could possibly go wrong? So haunted, never going there, so haunted. Do you live in Paris? Have you seen this? Has anyone actually been down there? I wanna hear your account. Comment down below, because that's a scary movie, man. That's really not great. And finally, number one, Chernobyl. One of the greatest nuclear disasters ever in history. On April 26, 1986, reactor number four at the Chernobyl power complex exploded due to unstable and low power levels. Reactor four had been shut down a day before due to maintenance, and the next day at 1.23 a.m., radioactive debris compiled the fuel and reactor components just rained down all over the building. It's a nightmare scenario. Toxic fumes were carried from the wind, and after just four months, 28 workers had died due to radiation exposure. Eventually, they had to evacuate over 100,000 residents, and to this day, that zone is a no-go. Reactor 4 will stay highly radioactive for another 20,000 years, so no time soon. Let's not head back there anytime soon. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the eruption of Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens is a stratovolcano located in Skamania County, Washington. This volcano is best known for its huge and disastrous eruption on May 18th, 1980. This photo photograph comes from photographer Robert Landsberg, who of course was in the area at the time of the eruption. Before the eruption, he had visited the area in order to photograph and document all of the changes that were happening. On May 18th, he was within a few miles of the volcano when it erupted. Since he unfortunately was located so close to the explosion, he knew he would be unable to escape this disaster, so instead of focusing on the impossible, he focused on taking as many pictures as possible. Robert was obviously incredibly incredibly brave and dedicated, but also very smart. After snapping as many photos as he could, including this one, he then secured his camera in his backpack and covered his backpack with his body. He knew he was unlikely to survive, but wanted to make sure that these photos did. His body was found 17 days later with his backpack still underneath him. His film was, of course, um, 
His film was of course developed and has provided geologists with some really valuable insights with his close documentation of the eruption. In our number 9 spot today we have The Core. This photo shows a physicist named Harold Agnew and while this looks like a relatively normal non-threatening photo, what he has in his hand is truly devastating. Harold is holding the nuclear core of what was nicknamed the Fat Man Atomic Bomb. This means that Harold is holding the nuclear core of the atomic bomb that was later dropped on Nagasaki in 1945. The immediate blast of course took many lives, but so did the long term effects of the bomb like radiation illness and that sort of thing. It's crazy to look at a photo like this because it seems just so perfectly normal when he literally has a life changing world ending device in the palm of his hand. Also I don't think I could ever hold something like that. Not only would I just like not want to, but I would just be so afraid that something was gonna go wrong. In our number 8 spot today we have the Challenger crew. This is a photo that was taken of the clearly very excited Challenger crew as they walked down the ramp ready to head off on their mission. The crew even included 37 year old Krista McAuliffe who was a high school social studies teacher. She had won a spot on this mission through a program with NASA called the Teacher in Space program and she had trained diligently for months in order to be the first non-military person in space. On January 28th 1986 the Challenger mission proved to be fatal just 73 seconds after liftoff. Two rubber o-rings failed because of the cold temperatures of the morning and on live television the world watched as the spacecraft broke apart and plunged into the ocean, sadly taking the lives of everyone on board. It is an absolutely tragic event made even more chilling by this final photo. Number 7. The Lady of Radom Hall. This one's a classic. If my grandma was still alive she would have loved this one. If you haven't seen this photo it's going to live rent free in your head from here on out. This spirit is said to haunt Raynham Hall in Norfolk, England. Nice. My old home. Not Norfolk, but I have English family. What's up? This tale kicked off back in 1936 after a photo went around through Country Life magazine. I guess that's its way of going viral back then, right? This photo shows a spirit, apparently, wearing a brown gown. Hence where her name comes from, the Brown Lady of Raynham Hall. Just casually floating down a staircase. That's lovely. Imagine seeing this in real life. I'm sweating doing this list. Legend has it that the ghost is that of Dorothy Townshend. She was the sister of Robert Walpole, the first Prime Minister of Britain back in 1676. Some reports say the image is a result of long exposure, just gone awry, but you know. Either way, I don't like looking at this photo, so let's move on. Great. Number 6. The Gates of Guinea. Another bad portal to another bad place. The souls of the dead have to go somewhere, and depending on your beliefs, that somewhere could either be beautiful, it could be peaceful, or it could be uh, absolutely terrifying. Who knows, one of the three. In the world of voodoo, that place is an underworld called the Gates of Guinea. And here is the front door. Yeah, located in Louisiana, this tomb, that of voodoo priestess Marie Lavio, is apparently the entrance to these deep waters, this twilight realm. And some voodoo followers try and open these gates to access the souls of the deep. And apparently the goal after that point would be to use the dead almost like zombies, like your own little personal zombie army. So that's horrible, I guess. Number five, backseat driver. This photo here is from 1959 and it certainly looks like it. It was taken by a lady named Mabel Chinnery and the photo at first glance is just a classic 60s shot of a man in a car. That man was Mabel's husband. Now the man in the back seat however we have no idea who that is. Apparently they weren't there in real life. Her husband was the only one in the car at that time. And also, that's a pretty tough angle. If you wanted to recreate this photo with your friends after work, it would be hard. You have to really line something up there. Some Edgar Wright shot has to happen, you know what I mean? It's like he's appearing to us through the seat almost. So either this is a lie, and there was indeed a man sitting in the back left seat, or like Mabel believes, this is her dead mother-in-law. Now if she had said father-in-law, I'd think maybe it's a spirit, but this for sure looks like an older man with a Color, so we don't know. A lot of ghosts just like to hang around. Honestly, Mabel, just see a priest, just to be safe. Number four, ghost pilot. Oh, this one gives me the absolute creeps. I'm hoping it's just a friendly ghost, but really, you never know. I never know. I don't know. I don't want anything to do with any ghost, but sometimes they're friendly, apparently. Any sort of spirit, I don't welcome. There, I said it. The ghost pilot is a photograph that shows a spirit from 1987, when a woman named Mrs. Sayer was visiting an airfield in England. So of course she did the tourist thing and she got a photo in the cockpit, as we all do. Especially now, if you're seeing Top Gun, I'd be like, yo, get a photo of me. 
But while you're sitting in there getting that tourist photo, do you ever think of who may have sat there before? It's kind of creepy, right? People swear the Titanic was a cursed ship and that spirits were responsible for the ship's bad luck. I personally believe it was the iceberg, but you know, I'm open. Next time you want to sit in the pilot seat, look around for spirits. This image was developed and it appears somebody or something is in the helicopter with Mrs. Sayer. Yeah, nothing like finding out after, eh? Oh. In our number three spot today, we have the lipstick. This is a photo that comes to us from December 10th, 1945. If looking at this image gives you a shudder down your spine, that absolutely makes sense as it was written by a terrible person known as the Lipstick Killer. This photo is an image of a note he left written on the wall at one of his crime scenes. The photo comes from the apartment of Francis Brown as just before he wrote this message, he took her life. After this message was left, he ended up taking the life of one other person before he was finally caught by police six months later. Later. The message scrawled in the photo reads, quote, for heaven's sake, catch me before I kill more. I cannot control myself. It is an absolutely chilling note with a horrifying backstory. In our number two spot today, we have the acid drum. This photo comes to us from inside the house of another terrible person, the serial killer, Jeffrey Dahmer, made very famous recently. This photo was taken from the inside of his home after he was found out and caught by authorities. Before his arrest, he was sadly able to take the lives of 17 different people. Although this photo might look kind of plain, the horrors are plentiful. This shot shows a drum full of acid that was located inside of his home. Probably don't really need to tell you what it was used for. I can't imagine the horrors investigators saw when they entered his home, and even previous to that as they investigated his crimes. Thankfully, Jeffrey was caught, and in 1992, he was sentenced to life in prison, but just two years later, he was killed by a fellow prison inmate. In our number one spot today, we have the Dyatlov Pass Incident. If you have never heard of the Dyatlov Pass Incident, you better buckle in, because it is so terrifying. This photo was taken in February of 1959, as nine young Soviet hikers sent out to trek through the Ural Mountains. They had set up a camp, and some time during the night, something happened that made them cut their way out of the tent and all flee the site. Leaving in such a rush, they were of course underdressed for the bitterly cold weather, and six of them ended up passing away from hypothermia, which is extremely tragic. The other three, however, is where this story takes an even more frightening turn. Like I mentioned before, no one knows why they fled the tent in the first place, and the last three hikers were found passed away with severe signs of physical trauma that no one agreed on what had caused it. In 2019, the investigation was reopened, and just last year there was a conclusion that a kind of avalanche called a slab avalanche was the cause for these injuries. Before you come at me in the comments, I know that not everyone is convinced that's what happened, and I don't blame you. It's really strange. So, down below in the comments, let me know what you think. Let's solve this mystery once and for all, together, in the YouTube comments. Regardless of what happened, this whole incident was of course very tragic, but the mystery behind it definitely takes it to a very spooky place. Number 10, John Mack. In the early 90s, a Pulitzer Prize winning psychologist named Dr. John E. Mack made the jump from diagnosing ordinary psychological conditions to researching apparent alien abductees and their stories and experiences surrounding UFOs. Yep. Google it up, it's actually terrifying and very real. Apparently cases studied by Mac and abduction sometimes get involved with hypnosis. This guy was a tenured professor since the 50s at Harvard. He did his research. The UFO abduction rabbit hole led him to interviewing and studying more than 200 people who insist that they were taken. At first he was trying to crack the psychosis of the subject, but after studying and funding from the Rockefellers, private donors and universities, he wrote numerous books on the phenomena and its strangeness. Again, tenured and Pulitzer Prize winner. He sadly passed in 2004 from a drunk driver. His life and death holds heavy conspiracy debate around it. Check it out, it's uh, a little bit strange. Number nine, Sophia. We've seen her on Fallon, we've seen her on breakfast television. She still looks like a bad cyberpunk character, doesn't she? Sophia by Hanson Robotics, the most advanced human-like robot that we have. Well, actually, this is like their 12th one. This is the world's first robot citizen, literally. Not only is she considered a citizen, she has a credit card and a seat in the UN. Like what? In 2016, Sophia premiered on the Jimmy Fallon show playing rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, simple stuff. 
Two years later, she's harmonizing with Jimmy live. Also, they didn't sing Mr. Roboto. Like, I just feel like that was a huge missed opportunity there. Like, where are the writers, dude? I've seen the Terminator and Ex Machina, and at the Web Summit presentation in 2018, Sophia and her brother Han glitched out on stage and had a terrifying, cryptic, non-coherent conversation, joking about ending the world. Yeah, it's horrifying. You gotta check it out. Dude, I feel like Furbies were their first try, and now they got these like brat dolls mini Sophia's coming out soon. Like, where's this going? Number eight, Arthur Flowerdew. James Arthur Flowerdew was born in England in 1906. Grew up, paid his taxes, lived a pretty normal life. At about the age of 12, he began to have strange recurring dreams and hallucinations though. Over time, crystallizing into a very clear and vivid image. Dreams riddled with stone cities, carvings and cliffs, and vast deserts. He didn't understand what it all meant. One day, as an old man, he was watching a documentary on the BBC on the ancient city of Petra in Jordan. He was stunned. This was the city he had always seen. He called the BBC and asked them to interview him. Archaeological experts and the Jordanian government even invited him to come out to Jordan, where he continued to even baffle experts. Flowerdew was able to find his way around the city without a map, giving precise details on landmarks and even pointing out undiscovered locations. Yeah, here's the scary part. After all of this, he was convinced that he had lived an entire previous life in ancient times and was reincarnated in the 20th century. In our number seven spot today, we have the plague. This photo comes from the 19th century, from the third plague pandemic. This was the first time that the plague had spread to all five continents. While we now know something about what that might have been like, what we haven't had to endure are the doctors that dressed like this. This is a photo of the outfits and masks that plague doctors wore when they would come to your house to treat or diagnose you. The long beak-like noses of the masks are very creepy, but they were used to hold herbs and other nicely scented things because they believed that it would help ward off the bad air, which at the time is what they thought was causing the sickness. A pandemic certainly is bad enough. Thankfully, our doctors and nurses are just sticking to scrubs. In our number five spot today, we have Mount Pinatubo. This is a photo that is showing Mount Pinatubo, which is located in the Philippines on June 15th, 1991. That is the day that this volcano erupted into what would be the second largest volcanic eruption of the 20th century. Certainly impressive, also extremely terrifying. This photo shows the pyroclastic flow full of hot gas and rock being flung into the air. Eruptive activity in the volcano first started on April 2nd of that year, which prompted researchers to set up seismographs in the area. By June, the volcano was having a group of progressively shallower eruptions before, on June 12th, the volcano had its first spectacular eruption, which sent an ash column 19 kilometers up into the atmosphere. After more highly gas-charged magma reached the surface on June 15th, the volcano once again exploded, this time sending the cloud of ash 40 kilometers up into the atmosphere. Volcanic ash and pumice blanketed the surrounding area and pyroclastic flows filled what were once deep valleys with fresh volcanic deposits. It was truly magnificent and extremely powerful and this photo shows just that. In our number four spot today we have the Pioneer's Defense. This photo is known as the Pioneer's Defense and Man, does it ever look creepy. This photo comes from 1937 and it was taken by a Russian photographer named Viktor Bulla. This photo takes place in the Leningrad area, which is now known as St. Petersburg, which is the second largest city in Russia. The people in this photo were part of a group that was the 1930s Russian equivalent of our Boy Scouts, and it was called the Young Pioneers. The masks on their faces leave a very eerie feeling, and for a fair reason. These people were doing a military preparation drill, which is the reason for the gas mask. This photo was taken during a time where the country was under the dictatorship of Joseph Stalin and the residents were constantly unsure of what was going to happen. The country was already seeing death and people were already frightened just a few years before the start of World War II. Brainer for me, 100%. Number three, the Philadelphia Experiment. I pray that this one is a hoax because there's a lot of documents that relate to this subject around the time that don't really seem to add up. The Philadelphia Experiment was an alleged event witnessed by Carl Allen and the United States Navy shipyard in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in October 1943. Allen describes an experiment where the US Navy attempted to render itself invisible, cloaking the destroyer the USS Eldridge and the bizarre scientific results that followed. 
On Alan's account, the destroyer successfully made itself invisible, but the ship inexplicably teleported to Norfolk, Virginia for several minutes and then reappeared back in Philly. Sounds pretty cool, right? So what's the catch? The ship's crew was supposed to have suffered various side effects, including insanity, intangibility, and being frozen in place. Like people stuck in the walls and stuff. Stuck in the floors like this is a scene from Jumanji. Terrifying. The story surfaced in the late 1950s when Allen sent a book full of handwritten letters referring to the experiment to a U.S. Navy research organization. The U.S. Navy maintains that there has been no such experiment ever conducted and that the details are highly exaggerated and falsified. Dude, I hope so, because this is horrifying. Number two, wow. In a 1959 paper, Cornell University physicists speculated that if an extraterrestrial civilization was attempting to communicate with us using radio signals, that they might use a frequency of 1420 megahertz, which is naturally emitted by hydrogen, the most common element in the universe. In 1973, Ohio State University assigned the Big Ear to the scientific search for extraterrestrial intelligence. 1977, Jerry Amon, a SETI volunteer astronomer, was analyzing data and spots a series of signal intensities and frequencies that left him and his colleagues astonished. The wow signal was the first signal detected from Earth. The signal came from the direction of the constellation Sagittarius. Amon discovered the anomaly, impressed by the result. On the computer printout, he circled 6EQUJ5 and wrote three letters beside it. Wow. Leading to the event's famous name. The signal lasted for a full 72 seconds, and it remains today as the strongest candidate for an ET radio transmission ever detected. And number one, of course, the USS Cyclops. Launched in May of 1910, the USS Cyclops was a Protus-class collier built for the United States Navy, a huge cargo ship designed for transporting coal. In 1918, the cursed vessel left Rio de Janeiro, heading for Barbados right around a certain dangerous triangle. Unfortunately, the Voyager was never to be seen again. Named Cyclops after a race of giants from Greek mythology, she was huge and heavy, unmissable by the naked eye. So what happened to her? The loss of the ship and crew still remains the single largest loss of life at sea the United States Navy has ever experienced. Funny thing is, it went right through the Bermuda Triangle, a place where Magnetic compasses stop working, ships are never heard from again, and of course the military still refuses to operate and research. Skeptics are quick to say aliens and black holes, but the magnetism surrounding the Bermuda Triangle cases might be a logical explanation. I think they still owe us some explanations. No, I'm looking at you, Freedom of Information Act. Yeah.